Yes, hello, hello, and welcome to my drunk Tanya. I am not drunk. I don't, I don't get drunk. I follow the Zohar. The Zohar says you should always have the, you should never have the wine of drunkenness, but always have the wine of simcha, true joy. Mechayim. Okay, so uh, we're gonna do Tanya today. We're, we're continuing the Fabrangan from. Yud Shvat. Today is Friday. Yud Bet Shvat. Twelfth of Shvat. And um, it's uh, okay. So we're learning the Tanya. Tanya says, "Kim hitavut kol olamot elyonim v'tachtonim me'ayin leyesh v'chiyutam v'kiyumam v'kaimim." Shelo yachzeru lihot ayin ve'efes. So what the Alter Rebbe of Lubavitch is saying is that um, that that when all the worlds came into being, it's not just this world. First of all, there's worlds within worlds and worlds beyond worlds. Basically, there's four worlds. Uh, we're in the world of Asiya, the cosmos, the physical world. And then there's a spiritual world called Yitzira. And then there's a spiritual world beyond that, of Bria, creation. And then there's the beyond of the beyond is, is Atzilut, where God and God and his name are one, God and his causations are all one. So the all of the worlds came into being, above the upper worlds and the lower worlds, from complete non-existence into existence, with the creation, God created the empty space, he took his infinite light and he which was existence, and he created non-existence, the empty space. So, and then God said, and the world came into being. Baruch Shamar Vayolam. So he spoke, and then there's existence. So he brought existence from complete non-existence. This is basic Jewish belief. God speaks, and the, and, and the world comes into being. What does it mean, God, to speak? Nobody really knows. It's okay. I don't, don't, if any rabbi tells you he knows, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> Give me a break. So, but we don't know what it means that God speaks. We just see, we just see, it's, it's, we, we compare our speech to God's speech, and there is, God does speak, but we don't know what that means. We just know that his speech creates reality. Why? Because it's, this is part of Jewish existence and belief. This is part of Jewish belief. We believe. You know, we, well, some people believe. I, I personally, I don't believe so much. I just know. I don't ask questions. I just know. If you believe, you need... It's like, you don't know, but you believe. I know. I know God spoke and the world came to being. How do I know? Don't ask. Okay, so um, so anyhow, so he brought into all the worlds out of complete non-existence and their lives and their, ex and their endurance and their existence, that, they, that they, they exist and they will not go back to nothingness. So if God brings into everything into existence, how are they not going to go back to nothingness? Good question. Balatanya, the Balatanya has a good question. So uh, let's see. Um... So, it's, it's just, just purely by the merit of the word of God and the spirit coming forth from his mouth, may he be blessed, that, that the worlds are dressed in. So the worlds are dressed in, so to speak, God's breath. So, um, so when a person speaks, what is his word? He says a word, it's gone. It's gornished. It's nothing. So, so when a person speaks, he says the word, and the word is gone. It's like Lahavdil Elif Havdilat Eric Dolphy, the great jazz musician, said, "Once you, once you play a solo, the music goes into the air, and it flies away, and it's gone forever." It's, that's improvisation. It's always something new. It could be the same notes, the same riff, but it's a different time and place. So everything you say is a, is, is a special uh, segula. But well, but really, what is it? I say the word uh, YouTube, and YouTube, it's gone. Where does it go? It's gone. That's what the Alter Rebbe is saying here. It's the same way. That's true. Even even vis-a-vis. The sum total of the person's, uh, the soul behind speech, the soul that vivifies and gives life to our power of speech, called the the nafsho medaberet, which is the aspect of the garment, the middle garment, because there's three garments: there's thought, speech, and action, are all the garments of the soul, the nefesh. So a thought, what, what vivifies the thought, what gives life to the thought, the soul of thought, the nefesh of machshava, and what gives life. 
and being to speech, there's a nefesh behind it that gives life to a word. And, and action, what gives life irisma? It, wouldn't raise, it says we wouldn't raise our little finger if it was not for the decree of a watcher, of an angel above, that God sends an angel to decree that my finger will go from here to here. Everything is to God's decree, but that's what, what, what power is behind that. It's called the nefesh amas of, of the action. So that's also called garments. So, so the middle garment is speech, which is the power of speech. Speech is a garment, so to speak. It's a, it's, it, it's a garment for the soul. A thought is a garment for the soul. An action is a garment for the soul. It encloses the neshama, nefesh, ruach, these different levels of soul. The nefesh, ruach, neshama from below to above. Nefesh is the basic soul, ruach, higher soul, uh, spirit, translated as spirit, and the Shama is the Jewish soul, it's very high. So, because Jews were high, what can we say? We, we didn't choose to be, God chose us. So anyhow, um, so uh, so go ahead, shoot me, God forbid, you know. I'm just saying, you know, why, most people, I'm just that's, that's a little, what I meant to say was, don't shoot me, but um, most people hate Jews because God chose the Jews, like the ancient doggerel from, well, not ancient, the 200-year-old doggerel from England goes, how odd of God to choose the Jews. And the response is, not odd at all. The Jew, it is, it's not odd. The Jews chose God. Um, so we chose God and everybody hates us. On the other hand, God, God, we're the chosen people, meaning God chose us. And why does, why does the world hate us? Rabbi Steinsalt says there's two reasons why people hate the Jews. One, is because we say we're the chosen people, and two is because most of the world believes that's actually true. So back to the subject here. Um, so, so the nev there's, I was talking about the soul, and there's levels of the soul, and the basic, and every, there's a soul behind speech, behind thought, and behind action. So the middle level is speech. A person can't speak forever. Well, maybe I can speak forever, but no. anyhow, you'll turn off the YouTube. So anyhow, um, so shehu koach medaber kadibur shelad sheyachol medaber devarim la en ketz the power. Oh, the no, the speech, the power the, from the soul's point of view, it can speak forever. The nefesh, excuse me, correct what I said before. From the the Alt Balatan is saying, from the point of view of the nefesh of of medaber, the nefesh could could go on forever, right? And so all the more so is that true for the, the, the inner the inner garment of the of the nefesh, which is thought. That we could think for, from the nefesh's point of view, we could think forever. That's from that's where the, the thought, speech comes from thought. So the, so so that uh, that's the, the inner garment is thought. Vehi chiyotam ve'eno tzurich l'mar legabe mahut v'atzmut a nefesh shen eser bechinotei hanal chabad chagat v'nihi malchus. So so and all the more so, and you don't even have to say. That that's true. That it could go. That what could go on forever. So again, again, we're trying to answer the question about the word goes out and it's nothing, right? And how does it keep it from becoming nothing? How does it? But if God created out of non-existence, how does his creation stop from going back into non-existence? So when we're talking about the essence of the nefesh, which are the ten spheres of uh, uh, wisdom, understanding, consciousness, uh, love, fear, uh, pride, can, uh, spl or splendor, uh, eternity or victories, um, majesty, connection. You know, these these are the ten spheres, right? So that they're all drawn from the letters of thought, 
Because remember, God's thought is action. God's speech is action. And they're what, what is God's thinks letters? So we connect to the letters, we're connecting to the primordial letters of creation. And that's all dressed in the word, the words we say. That's the power of speech, the power of prayer, the power of Torah. It's, it's all the secret of the letters. So, 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 so even though the letters of thought are, are very spiritual and very very fine uh, spiritual entities, and then we now we're going to moving on to the Tanya for Shabbos, because we don't record on Shabbos, or we don't watch YouTube's on Shabbos also. Aval eser bechinot chabad, but the ten aspects of the ten ten spheres, wisdom, understanding, consciousness, and so forth. So when the ten spheres are the root and the source of the thoughts, and they they're no they have no aspect of of the letters. They're not yet they're not they're put in letters. And thought is like the pre pre soul, the pre light that that goes into the very letters of thought in a human in a human being's mind in a Jew's mind. So there's something before it it concretizes into letters. The mashal kishino felat ezu ahava vechemda bilibo. Person falls in love. So what's going on when a person has a desire or love or wants something? Balatanya says. Balatanya says. Shel adam kodem she aleb me alev ela moach. So before it even goes, if he feels something, but he doesn't yet understand what it is. You see, the man he sees the girl. And he's like, wow, he really loves the girl. And he feels it in his heart, but he doesn't know why yet. It's like, this is crazy, you know? The, the first one, you, that woman that you met and you first felt that love for, you had no idea why. Because why? Because the feelings of the heart had not yet risen up to the brain and you didn't, 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 maybe, the truth is, I don't think you ever know why, but, but there are certain, the, the way you appreciate, you feel an appreciation, and then you know why I appreciate. Love is beyond. It's another thing. So So when it, when it's an abstract feeling, it, the point of the Balatani is an abstract feeling does not yet concretized into letters. It's like, you don't know why you, why you enjoy it, you don't know why you love it, uh, appreciate it, and so you learn something, and it's like, wow, this is a great idea, but I don't, I am enjoying learning it, but I don't get it yet. So how, why is that? How could I enjoy it before I get it? So oh, the whole is a machal arev. Oh, eat something. I I I I'm, I'm going to eat something. I don't know why, but I feel I feel I I like it. Nice tasty food. Um, after the desire fell into his um, knowledge. And he understands the desire. And then he thinks, well, can I, I want to understand this wisdom. How am I going to get to that place where I understand what's being written in the book? Or how I, I want the girl, I, I feel I love the girl. How am I going to get the girl? Or can I, you say to yourself, I, I, I feel I, I, I really want to have a, have, a, have a tuna sandwich. How, and then you think, ah, how am I going to get a tuna sandwich? That, that's when it turns into letters. Okay, letters of thought. La siga machal o limidet a chokma of Paul, Harry Kan Nilmada, Nolda, Bekinet Otiot Mocho. Then the letters are born in the brain. Shen Otiot Kilashon Am. The way we think, we think in language, we think in concrete language. Veim Amadabrim, Vamaharim Behem, Kol in Yeneolam. That's how everything in the world comes into being. God bless and Shabbat Shalom. Parshat Pashalach.